uh, it says uh, it'll be heard around the globe. Hallelujah. Yeah. Twinkling of an eye is not long. We got that right. I'm going to try to get on here. I use my phone as a mic and um, and the camera, and I, I also try to log in my um, desktop so I could see see better. There. Uh, and how long have you been? I'm sorry. How long have you been in Baguio? Um, this September will be our third year. How about that? Yeah. And uh, I just told uh, Jeff, our regional uh, director, I mean, not Jeff, our area director, um, Sam Bowden, that, that we're going we're, we're gonna to extend. We're up at next September. Not, not in 2021, we're going to extend. Good, um, good. Yeah. But we're going to go back to the States. This is our, my last um, block for the demon. And then uh, next year, we're going to go back to the States and, and uh, take a little furlough. Visit. Right. I want to visit, visit churches that bless APTS, um, visit our friends and family. We were supposed to go back this year, but our, our flights got canceled. Not surprised. Yeah, things are uh, changing here. The, the dec there's more people getting sick, so the mayor just did a declaration that people have to wear face shields now in a lot of the business sector, on uh, riders on public transportation, um, gloves too. So it's, uh, it, it's kind of, they don't call it martial law, but the city's closed. So to me, it's 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 a quasi martial law uh, because you're not allowed to leave the city unless you have papers. Uh, you can't even go to the to the Union down the ocean. Tour it. All the hotels are closed. Um, and like, you can leave the city if you have uh, like a flight itinerary, things like that. But they're they're more cautious about the. The, the virus here, and I don't know if they're treating it with those uh, those uh, common medicines for malaria. Uh, I had a, a good friend of mine, um, 74 years old, Bishop Arnold was his name, Messianic Jewish Filipino, lived in New York, had a ministry. He um, he's, he died from the virus in Manila last week. Um, well, it's still happening over here as well. Yeah. So I don't know if they're um, they're prescribing the the medicine here. Are you um? You, is school in Texas open, or is going? Is it online? Well, that's the plan, and the answer is yes. Okay. It's both. Hello, Elijah. Hello, Jason. Morning, sir. I see pretty pictures of some people. There's Joel. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Yes, it's good morning for you. It's good evening for me. <laughs> what time is it there? It is uh, two minutes to 7 p.m. Oh, oh two minutes, 7 p.m. Yeah, so depends on how long uh, we go tonight. If I start dozing off, you all wake me up. I see David. 
思。Taking roles. So if you see me looking down and so on, I am taking roles. I got you, Joe. Got you, Cam. <clears throat> Perfect attendance for Singapore. Yay! Because <laughs> it was our birthday yesterday. Singapore's birthday. It's still today. <laughs> it's still the same. I mean, it's it's still the same day for America. Yeah, America. <laughs> yeah, today is Singapore's national day. So, oh, Independence Day. Yeah. Independence Day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fireworks and everything. <laughs> uh yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I still have a few that have not logged in. Got me. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Well, I'm going to have a word of prayer with all of you, and uh, then I'm going to just take some time and answer any questions that you have at this point, and then we'll uh, jump into the uh, collaborative exercise for tonight. Um, I am back in Texas. So uh, we had a good flight from the great state of Montana, my home state. And uh, I, the plane was full which is really, uh, everybody of course has to wear face covering, but I was surprised that they filled up the plane. Uh, so uh, we, we asked the Lord to shield us and uh, my wife and I, two old people, uh, got on the plane and, and uh, apparently God was on our side. He always is on our side. Amen. We made it safe. It was a great, great flight. Um, enjoyed a month in Montana. Montana is the Alps, the Glacier National Park is the Alps of America. And I got my fix of uh, hiking and trail running and, and came home a very happy man with a beautiful woman happens to be my wife so can't can't beat that that's pretty good yeah so it's good to be back today it was almost 100 degrees in uh, Fahrenheit in uh, in Texas so we had a very warm welcome very warm welcome well let's pray shall we yeah 
for this evening and uh, the possibility of talking about the things that when it comes to Pentecostal and spirit-filled ministry keep our reservoir full. And we really need that because uh, we never know uh, what opportunities we'll have or what challenges we'll face. And we've got to be ready. Got to be ready in your authority and in your power and with your leadership. We need that. We need that every day of our lives. And uh, I'm reminded of the gospel writer who who quoted Jesus accurately when he said, without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. And that's, uh, that's us without you. Help us to be aware of that every moment of every day. And may this class, which is so important to uh, our effectiveness as your servants in our world, which is bound by sin and the evil one, uh, to be redemptive salt and light uh, through what you've accomplished at the cross, through your death, burial, and resurrection. And attention. We love you, Lord, and we give this evening to you in its entirety. Amen? Amen. So I'm game at the beginning tonight for any questions that you have faced uh, moving forward this first week. And if I can, I'll try to answer those for a, a bit. So does anyone have a question? Yes, Ed. Um, I work ahead and I, I, I copied, I, I made, I was wondering if sometime you can provide uh, copies of the slides from your YouTube. Um, I, I wrote out 26 pages of uh, notes, copying your, your slides. <laughs> And, and my hand is, is ready to fall off, but uh, I was- I noticed that. I noticed that your hand was, <laughs> was uh, disabled. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I will try to do that for you. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank it's you. I'll, I'll make a note of that. Um, There's a lot of valuable information in there. Yeah, okay, yeah. I also know some, several of the rest of you had logged on and started listening to the slides or the uh, lectures. This is the week for that. So uh, uh, you're not behind if you haven't begun, uh, but this is, the, this is the week you want to jump, jump into that. Any other questions? Seeing no hands, I'm going to move on. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, the purpose tonight is a collaborative. So uh, sometimes when you do a collaborative like this, there are people, uh, and there are some of the rest of you that are like Ed, you've worked ahead. And if I opened it up and said, uh, I want some of the principles that have to do with keeping your reservoir full for ministry, you'd give me the whole list you have. And that isn't fair to the rest of you. So we're going to limit you to one response. Okay. And we're going to ask that if possible, you not repeat something that someone else has already said. And then at the end, uh, I uh, have 
spent some time uh, working on some things that uh, really are uh, values added uh, items. And I'll share those with you and you can take notes on those. Okay, so you not only have what you've discovered uh, in terms of the topic, but you also will have some of my input to compare with what, what you have. Uh, my list is not authoritative. Uh, it is uh, based on my reflection uh, of uh, about, thir about 50 years of ministry. And uh, uh, it can supplement what you have. It can give some additional direction to what you have, but I, I won't do that until later on, the end of our time together. And that doesn't make mine entirely right and yours entirely wrong. Uh, that those first two questions are, are really uh, reflective. Um, I think you, you may pick up some things from your reading and the lectures. I also think that it's going to be very important for you to reflect on your, your own ministry experience. In fact, I uh, had uh, an, I had a uh, experience that I think will highlight what uh, we want to talk about tonight. Uh, Del Blinds, that's the young Blinds, not Delbert, the one that was president of SAGU for a number of years and was involved in planting a very effective church in Malaysia. Uh, but it's his son, was having a conversation with a veteran missionary and uh, that that man, you may have heard his name before, you may know him personally, David Leatherberry. Uh, the Lord has used him very effectively in ministry to Muslims. Um, and he has written a book called Strength from Inspiring Stories that is designed to uh, be a blessing to people who are in prison. Uh, He's probably best known for this book, Afghanistan, My Tears. Excellent, excellent, excellent book. Um, he had a um, encounter with a uh, man uh, that was exhibiting uh, demonic activity. And uh, so David, uh, I know him well, David uh, responded out of his relationship with the Lord and the authority that he knew that he had as a believer. And uh, uh, the man experienced deliverance from demonic power. And after that experience, uh, David began to experience uh, some uh, signs of rheumatoid arthritis. And it was obviously an attack of the enemy. Uh, claimed the power and authority that he has in Jesus, but it points up the importance, I think, of us being full of the Spirit, knowing who we are and what we have in Christ, and uh, not allowing the enemy to intimidate us. Uh, uh, apart from him, we can do nothing. But uh, some of you will recall that uh, I emphasized uh, the fact the last time we met that I, I am convinced that effective ministry flows from a full reservoir. Pause and just let that sink in again. Effective ministry as a spirit-filled believer or uh, 
a believer by any standard uh, blows out of a full reservoir. So our challenge uh, is keep our reservoir full. So that's what our discussion is about tonight. The uh, question goes like this, please identify what you believe to be at least seven. So out of our discussion tonight and your own reflection, you will identify seven that you think are especially important and significant and have been in your life as a person involved in Christian service and ministry in the power of the spirit. Seven core elements that are essential to the spirit dynamics, the spirit dynamics of effective ministry. And then uh, for uh, what you turn into me, you need to be prepared to explain your rationale for including them on your list as essential and explain their importance from a biblical theological perspective. Um, so that, that is the question. And so what I'm gonna to do tonight is I'm gonna give uh, you, each of you an opportunity to respond uh, with one and I know from having done this before that there's going to be that there that on your list there are going to be there's going to be repetition okay um, I mean I can I can click off right now what I know some of you are going to say uh, so we want to avoid repetition. Uh, so if someone states one, let's take note of that and what is said and include with that when you respond, include just a brief statement about it's important to you, it's importance to you. A couple of sentences so that we can uh, identify some of these um, characteristics. Tell us what you've discovered. What are uh, the uh, your practices when you are at your best for ministry? Okay. I, mean, I can tell you stories. I can tell you when I felt full and when I didn't. When I felt ready and when I didn't. And some of the times when I didn't, uh, it no one's fault but my own. Uh, so, uh, we, will, we will do that tonight. Take notes on this. This is not an exhaustive time together. This is just a time of, of sharing and collaboration. And then I'm gonna, at the end, I'm gonna give you uh, s some of the ones that I feel are especially significant to me. So who's gonna be first to give us one? Let me see your hand. Okay, Sarah Joy. Good morning. Uh, good evening, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, for me, uh, for me, sir, my practice is worship. Good. I'm a worship leader, so uh -huh. for me that is very, uh, very important. Like, um, of course, Paul says in Ephesians five nineteen to speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and song from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. So uh, for me, it is very important because through, through songs, through praise, through worship, it helps me to be in tune with God, to connect with God, to be in His presence um, every day. So we have these examples, of course, like David, the importance of um, praise or worship in strengthening one's intimacy a relationship with with God, but I really find this very important with my experience when we pray or minister to like a demon possessed person. Every time we pray, we also have like sing like songs, and because of that, we I we I find the the reaction from the person being possessed, how they how the the demons react to 
to the right. to, to worship and and praises. So for me in my life, it's just been developed that uh, personally and in the ministry how the importance of. It's very that's very good, Sarah Joy. And I'll just let me tag on a couple of things with regard to that. There are Old Testament uh, uh, indicators of that. Mm -hmm not only in the life of David, but in yes. the life of others. Yes. You want to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also clear indications in the New Testament uh, mm -hmm. that you highlighted about the importance of that. One of, the, one of the things that is important with regard to the worship that you've indicated, worship is vertical. Mm -hmm. yes. So, so uh, it gets us pointed to him. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I, I know of worship, for example, I know of worship leaders, now I'm talking collectively, mm -hmm. tend to focus on music that is very self-occupied. Yeah, yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. if, now I know you're, I know you're a worship leader, Okay, so this is a little bit of theology of worship. Yeah. Uh, especially if your worship precedes prayer ministry. You following me? Mm -hmm. Especially if it, if, if it precedes a time of prayer ministry. Really try to focus on music that points people yeah. upward. Yes. Yes. Uh, your your prayer ministry time will have more miracles, mm -hmm. more faith expressed, mm -hmm. freedom that comes from the Lord because they are directed upward, mm -hmm. directed at themselves. That's mm -hmm. very good. Someone else? Another one? Yes, Kim. Uh, one thing that very important to me uh, is. Um, a journey heart of humility um humility Good. because you know um, our lord oppose the proud and a lot of time especially for minister pastor or worship leaders or when we are effective or when we always some some not careful would think that oh, that is because of the sermons or because of the great leaderships or because of what they can sing well or or certain music that hand created. But um humility is very important to know that um it's actually God who built the church. It's not yes. us. Yeah, yeah and it is actually God who who is the one that gifted all all us. We are we are actually nothing. Yeah. And the Lord actually chose us to 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 participate in his work. And I think most I think most important is that Everything that we are doing, we need God's power, God's healing, God's miracles, and it's it's God the one who 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 bless and then who who do His ministries. Oh, and, that's so good, Kim. Yeah. That's, so that's and, that so good. Yeah. So um, yeah. At the very beginning, you remember me that we would be aware of the fact that without him we can do nothing yeah that's right so that's that is precisely where you're at with regard to this and you were so right in highlighting the fact that he resists the proud yeah, that's right grace to the to those that are humble now let me let me do a little thing on grace here that i think can be helpful to us uh, we have a tendency to think of grace as what we get from God that we don't deserve. In fact, one uh, definition of that highlights that undeserved favor, undeserved favor from the Lord. And it is that, but, but grace, he gives grace to the humble. Grace, uh, grace is also everything God gives us that we need. Mm -hmm. So it's not simply what we don't deserve. It's everything that we need. So uh, 
Very good one. I hope everyone got that. Humility. Humility uh, is a big one. And, and, and humility means that we deliberately esteem ourselves in a biblical way. Okay, we know who we are, we know who God is. And we place ourselves in right relationship to him. Okay, third one. Someone else? I'm looking for a hand. Okay, Elijah, go. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning to uh, you. Uh, for, the, for this class, uh, the, I made the discussion uh, with my dad uh, because he, he's a pastor who often have the supernatural ministry, like casting demons out and uh, healing and uh, accepting their That's word right. of knowledge and uh, by touching somebody fell down or something. So, and uh, I made uh, some of the interview with him and uh, yes. we, yeah, and we made one that uh, the elements that this, we uh, discovered. And then uh, finally, uh, me, uh, my, my father uh, made her answer and that is something like uh, it's a faith, you know. It just faith? believe, yeah, just believing all scripture without yeah. any add and reduce. That's right. Yeah, it, it's something like uh, like if scripture said Jesus gave the power of healing and casting demons out to his disciples, we just believe that. All right, it's, that's uh, good. You know like a pure heart like that's a good. child has so, that's good yeah very very good let me let me let me tag on to that one <laughs> here's here's what faith is faith is confidence in god yeah confidence in god mm -hmm. confidence in his provision confidence in his promises confidence in his character confidence He's sovereign, Elijah. He's sovereign. He, he can do what he wants to, when he wants to, the way he wants to. But uh, we have confidence in him. It's very good. Very good. In fact, I've known, the, I've known some people who have been very effective, like, like your father and, and so on, in healing ministry in uh, the supernatural. And as they are tuned in to their Lord, uh, many times they testify to actually seeing, mm. seeing by way of the Spirit what God desires to do. Mm. Yes, yes. They see the lame walking. They see the deaf hearing mm. and we're not at that point we're not talking about uh what we in the united states call pipe dreams um mm. they're things that are not real these are realities they see mm. and they respond with faith born of what god is in fact my mother who was mightily used of the lord elijah my mother who mightily used of the Lord uh, as one of the early credentialed women in the Assemblies of God uh, would testify to the gift of faith. Okay? Now we know that's in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Mm -hmm. But she would say the gift of faith is a confidence supernatural confidence born of the spirit mm. she said when god would give me the gift of faith for someone's healing or something supernatural there was a dread of doubt in my mind that it wouldn't be fulfilled okay it was a supernatural thing that's a very good one, Faith. Okay, someone else. Who else? Yeah, Jason. Hi, Dr. Patel. Yeah, so I had um, um, a phrase, the art of mobilization. 
the crux is really communication. So for me, what's important in effective ministry is developing um, a sharpening of, of our communication, mobilization in order to be able to sell the purpose effectively to the people that we are leading. And I'm a pastor, and so I feel that it's very important to be able to catch a vision and then be able to impart a vision to your current congregation so that people will be able to catch it and to follow it. So many Old Testament scripture, Joshua, Moses, even the life of Jesus, he was constantly mobilizing and activating the, the gifts of communication, examples to lead his followers. And so um, for me, so, effective. So good. Yeah, that's so good. So good. In fact, Jason, I, I believe I'm, I'm tagging you on to Elijah just a little bit. Uh, there's a sense in which that's prophetic. The prophetic gift, the prophetic gift is the voice that God gives a human communicator to share a divine faith inspiring message not just faith inspiring, sometimes, sometimes it is a message that requires, for, requires remediation, requires correction. And uh, it, it is a voice that says, this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Now, you have, if, you, if you want God's blessing, this is what you do. And it is not... It is not self-induced. It is not self-induced. It is Holy Spirit prompted. Very good. Very good. Now, I didn't have that on my list, so kudos to you, brother. That is, thank you for sharing that. I saw a couple of other hands, someone else. Okay, Diana, give us yours. Well, going back to you're saying what gives us a full reservoir, one of the things that helps me is being in the fellowship with other believers, going to church. Oh, oh, oh. Getting hugs, getting, uh, you know, affirmation, encouraging one another, praying together, worshiping together. For me, that's huge. You know, uh, Diana, there is a tendency in the church today to make Christianity so personal personal relationship with God that we fail to realize that in the scriptural mindset community was huge okay in fact we've got scripture that tells us that uh, we corporately are the temple of the Holy Spirit so when we gather together, the collective potential of him being among us. Uh, I don't know, I, Diana, I don't, I don't know if you've had this experience. I think you and some of the rest probably have. I've walked into services where uh, this fellowship in the spirit was so strong the moment that I walked in, I felt like God could do anything. Amen. That there wasn't anything outside the realm of possibility because of that, that generated corporate. Uh, see, he has promised where two or three are gathered in my name. There am I among them. Um, yeah, in fact, he, in 1 Corinthians 11, is that we don't discern the body of the Lord. And the clear teaching of that passage is corporate, not simply personal. Yeah, for this cause, many are weak and sickly. It's a sin against the body. Sin against the body. Very good, Diana. 
again, that's kind of like one I've got a little bit later on, but good. Uh, I thought I saw someone else's hand up. Okay, David. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I sure can. Uh, something I put down, I think a bit more personal to me would be to be faithful to his calling. What's that? To be faithful to his calling. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So exactly. I, I think fortunately for me, it's like uh, in the ministry, there's always a lot of hindrances and limitation. And there's a lot of things that can happen in our life that can derail or distract. So I think the... At least, at least yeah. when, whenever I recall, there was this very effective moment of my life. That was where there was a great, uh, yeah. my wife was actually going through depression, but we pulled through. And, and at that moment, right, I think while I agree that the, it, the, there's this greater sense of dependence, but I thought that the reason why I wanted to stay on the track in spite of all this was more because I hope I can be faithful. So I think that was the primary motivation for... Yeah allowing ourselves to continue to remain in difficulty instead of giving up. And because we wanted to stay on the track and then we have that opportunity to experience God's empowerment. Oh, that's so good, David. In fact, it, it's what Jesus said. He, he looked up to the Father. He said, I finished what you sent me to do. And that was the reason he was effective. He stayed in the center of God's will. In fact, uh, I, I've got to share this. I don't know if some of you are Facebook friends with my with me. I know Ed is, and I think Joel, aren't you a Facebook friend of mine? Uh, my uh, my life verse, uh, big deal for me. I just got to tell you, um, Acts twenty twenty four. I do not count my life of any value or as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. I'm finished. I want that to be true. That's David. That's where that's where the blessing is. That's where the supernatural is. That's where signs and wonders are, and that's where we're going to hear, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Amen. Thus, gifts us abilities he means us he empowers us and we are stewards amen that's what we are we are stewards you you i'll tell you what you guys are just doing a great job okay I need another one who's going to volunteer. Ed, what's yours? Now I'll get to you, Joshua. Um, imitate and model Jesus. That's good. Um, you mentioned 1 Corinthians 11. Paul says, uh, you should imitate me, and I imitate Christ. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, and Jesus even instructed us and instructed his disciples. Um, to do what he did. And he said, you're going to do even more. Yeah. Um, that's very direct. Yeah. yeah. Christ follower. Yeah. Christ follower. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, read a chapter you probably already have, the one on discipleship. Mm hmm the point that the early disciples not only heard what he taught but followed what he did now I'm I'm going to I'm going to throw this in for what it's worth Ed uh, and the rest of you it used to be in this course 
One of the assignments that I would give is charting all the miraculous uh, events from one of the Testaments, either the Old Testament or the New Testament. And the students had to chart the, if there were parallel accounts, they could make note of the fact that they were parallel accounts. They would look at the, those miraculous events, either Old or New Testament, with an eye for dynamics and technique. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. With an eye for dynamics, in other words, what, what precipitated the miraculous event, what were the dynamics there, dynamics of the spirit, dynamics of the power of God, and what can be learned from any technique issues that are involved there. Um, an interesting one, and many people don't have it noted this one, and I'm just kind of throwing something out that I think can be a blessing to you in terms of, of uh, searching it out. Uh, very often in the New Testament, very often in the New Testament, they prayed and then they laid their hands on people. But we have a tendency to do the other. <laughs> we have a tendency to lay our hands on first and pray. But they prayed and then laid their hands. Very often praying following that procedure leads to an understanding of the will of God in a given situation. Amen. What I'm saying? Amen. Okay, so Amen. That, that's just an example. That's just an example of, of something that I think you've highlighted. That's very good, Ed. I think I saw, who did I see? Oh, yeah, Joshua. Good. I, I would say um, sacrificial given. Yeah. Sacrificial given. Um, I, I found out that Every time I'm holding on to something, it stops the flow of the anointing over my life. <laughs> and when God asks you to give your time or your resources and you keep holding on to it, it stops the flow in your oh, life. Oh, that's so good. I'll give you a name for that one, Joshua. Thank you. I'll give you a name. Stop and think about Jesus feeding the multitude. Busy, busy day of ministry. The disciples say, what? Send them home. Home. Send them home and eat. To eat. Yeah. Send them home. And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Hmm. And hmm. they protest. They said, we don't have, the, we don't have enough money feed a multitude like this there's a little boy I, I don't think anybody spends enough time thinking about the miracle that little boy experienced five mm -hmm. loaves two fish Savior. he blesses them and breaks them and there are after mm -hmm. At least 15,000 people. It says men, women, and children. 15,000 on five and two. Twelve baskets left over. Amen. Boy, that's a good one, Joshua. That's a good one. So one of, the, one of the ways to keep our reservoir full is not to uh, hoard it for ourselves. Be ready to give. Give even when 
We're dog tired. I, I, I just now was reminded of the little lady. Two small coins. And Jesus said she's given more than them all. Mm. And what she has done will never be forgotten. Good, good, good. Do I have any, do I have any, another one somewhere here? Okay, I see, yes, sir. I see Joe. Yes, sir. Okay, Joe. Yes. Good morning, Joe Dr. Martin. Yes. Good morning, sir. And good morning, everyone. My name is, can you hear me, sir? I can. Yes, yes. Mine is uh, love and compassion for the lost. Yeah. Love and compassion for the lost. For me, yeah. love and uh, for me, love and compassion is the most essential element to the spiritual dynamics of effective ministry. When in fact, I place I place love on number one because love is an eternal attribute. When in fact, I can say that love coexists with God. It is intrinsic in His being. Because God is love, according to First John chapter four verse eight. In yeah. the Old Testament, God's love and compassion for Israel was demonstrated in the life of Hosea. There is an insight from the NIV Bible that Hosea had married a woman who acted like a prostitute. Yet the more she went on him, the more Hosea loved her. Hosea chapter two verse thirteen. She decked herself with rings and jewelry and went away after her lovers, but she forgot me, declares the Lord. That's in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, uh, the main reason why God sent His Son to the world is because of love and compassion for humanity. We can see that in John chapter 3, verse 16. Even Jesus, as He started this ministry, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, the Bible said when He saw the crowds, He had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I just would like to cite uh, Dr. William Barclay on his commentary of the verse. The word which is used for move with love and compassion, which means a plang nistis, is the strongest word for pity in Greek language. It is formed from the, the word plangcha, which means the bowels or internal organs. And it describes the compassion, which moves yeah, the man to the deepest depth Joe of Marie, his being. Here's, yes, here's the word. Here's the word. That word yes. is visceral. And it means... Yes, sir. That's what he felt. Yes, sir. That's what he felt. Yes. Uh, it, is, it is the kind of feeling you experience when you're looking at a film and you don't want to cry, but you can't keep yourself from tearing up. Yes, sir. That, yes, sir. Mm, that's what he felt. Yes, sir. He's, Blockness. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it just a conclusion for 30 seconds, sir. If this kind of love and compassion will be moving God's servant towards his respective ministry and his work to reaching out to the lost world. To the point so of having to the point of having his bowels, his internal organs disturbing him in the inside that would never stop until love and compassion is served to hopeless and helpless humanity, I believe all of us can make great impact in our personal ministry and to the perishing world. That is why I place here's, love and compassion on the Here's the key. The here's the key. The key is this. How does it come? How do you get that? How does that come to motivate you uh, in your daily life and ministry? And here's the key. The fruit of the Spirit is love. So we have to learn to respond to what He would do within us. We have to say no. We have to say no to our natural selfish instincts and allow the Spirit of God to form Christ in us. Very good. Thank you, sir. Very, very good, Joe Marie. Someone else? Yes, Joel? And then I'll get to you, Grace. 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> for me, um, uh, one of the things that uh, I uh, can say is to transform lives. Transform life or transform yeah. lives. Uh, for me, uh, to have a transformed life is uh, very important in the ministry also. Because as uh, the book of Revelation said, uh, they overcame him with the, with the blood of Jesus and the power of their testimony. And I think uh, our testimony is so important that we have to consider in, our, uh, in uh, the ministry. That as we minister, we also have that uh, transform lives for us to help others be transformed by the grace of God. And in fact, the word of God said, you will know them by their fruit. And um, knowing that we are, uh, we are part of the body of Christ and uh, we are uh, in connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, through our fruit, uh, we, people can see uh, our, uh, our um, seriousness in, uh, in uh, serving the Lord. And in that area, people will see um, through our uh, lives, and in fact, um, they will uh, glorify the Lord in that area at the same time. As I uh, remember a phrase that says, um, action speaks louder than word. So our transformed lives is very important in uh, ministering in order for us to um, impart something to the people around us also. Joel, uh, uh, I want to take you back to... Uh we just heard from Joe Marie, and that is uh, that transformation issue that you just highlighted. He works it in us. He works taking us from self-centered, self-focused, self-occupied people to a concern about others. And it's interesting, uh, it's interesting that uh, uh, Galatians 5 uh, doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit are. Mm. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love. And many commentators believe that what follows are the transformed results of God's spirit working love in our lives. Mm. So that's very good. Grace, I saw you. I thought that uh, you were ready to respond to one. Uh, yes, I just, uh, for me, it's very basic. Uh, what really works for my spiritual life is just a consistent daily uh, partaking of God's word, just a devotional reading of God's word every day. In my uh -huh. life. Yeah, I get so oh, yeah. when I don't read the Word of God, uh, I feel I don't have strength to do anything. So um, it helps me to discern also the move of God and the spirit of uh, the move of the spirit is like uh, how it, it lies. It, it goes in with the Word of God, and so um, it helps in my discernment and accountability. So I really treasure the daily slow reading of God's Word and letting Him speak to me um, devotionally. Anybody who knows me knows that's a big deal for me. Um, the renewing of our mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2, is tied to the Word of God. Um, the Word of God is creative. Uh, and all you have to do is look at Genesis 1 and 2 and John 1 for that reality to to uh, to make itself real it is a life that is uh, filled with God's uh, word that is effective uh, I uh, I'll tell yeah I guess I can take the time to do this uh, I was I was in high school in the United States raised in a Christian family. Um, I uh, had been dedicated to Jesus at a very early age. I had a mother that was very involved 
in ministry. I had a father who was deeply committed to the Lord and was a leader in our church. But when I was in high school, I was a hypocrite. And uh, I knew all the words. I knew all the actions. I know all the behaviors that would cause people to think that I'm a righteous, good person, okay? But on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and especially on Friday and Saturday, I was not a godly person, okay? So we had, a man come to our high school named uh, Dean Sheneman. Uh, Dean uh, had only known the Lord about six months, but Dean was, um, for him, following Jesus was not a duty. For him, following Jesus was a grand adventure. And he, he taught in our public high school, started a Bible study across the street from our high school. I attended the Bible study. Finally, I mean, I, I couldn't stand it anymore. So one day I went up to Mr. Sheneman and I said to him, Mr. Sheneman, I said, uh, what is it with you? I mean, I've been born, I was born and raised in a Christian family, but the brand of Christianity that I have and the brand of Christianity that you have are two different things. And he looked at me and he said a sentence to me, one sentence that forever has changed my life. How many would like to know the sentence? Would you like to know the sentence? Yeah. He said, Bartell, use my last name. He said, Bartell, how much time are you spending every day in God's word? And I wasn't spending any time. So I decided grace to take his challenge. I was working at a newspaper. I had enough credits my senior year of high school that I only had to go to half a day. I was working at a newspaper. And I would, some of you know cars. Uh, my grandfather gave me a 1950 Chevy, Chevrolet, okay? I wish I had it today. All right, gave me a 1950 Chevy. I would drive it to the newspaper, lunch sack on, on the seat, my Bible and a pencil. And I began the practice of spending my noon hour reading the Bible and underlining what I thought God was saying to me. The most profound revival in my entire life took place in that 1950 Chevy. It became a temple. I would weep, I would pray, I would worship, and my life was forever transformed. I, uh, I'm getting close to 40 years of teaching ministry in one of our universities here in the United States, Bible, theology and ministry courses, over 20 years of pastoral ministry, and all of that because a high school teacher said to me, how much time are you spending every day in God's word? Now, I'm going to, Grace, I want to say this to you. I don't just like this book. 
I love this book. And here's our challenge, and this is what you've highlighted, Grace. Our challenge is to get this in here. Amen? That's our challenge. Our challenge is to get this in here. Amen. That was a good one, Grace. That was very good. You, you, you touched a spot that's really dear to me, full of the word of God. Yeah. Okay. Do I have any others that are ready to, to uh, share one? Okay. Thank you, Ming. Go ahead. Good morning, sir. Um, I think uh, one of my uh, seven core elements uh, will be not doing our ministries as a routine. Oh. And uh, I was so touched um, when I was listening to a pastor's sermon when he said, uh, when he was uh, leading a Holy Communion, he said, yeah. I'm trying my best every time um, not to do our ministry as a routine. I was That's very good. touched. And I, I found his... Through the motions, yeah. Yeah, I found his... Uh, it's also very difficult sometimes yeah. for our... Yeah, for we ministers to keep uh, honest and true before God. So, yeah. That's good. Now, we have... 18 minutes uh, that I've got here left. And uh, uh, I, if you'll be patient with me, I think I can get you free early. All right. Uh, did you have one that you wanted to share? Uh, Michael, do you have one? Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yes, good morning. Uh, um, okay, for my, one of my points is um, pray in the spirit regularly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe that one mistake that many spirit-filled believers make is to depend on our baptism of the Holy Spirit experience for the rest of our Christian life. As important and as powerful the experience is, we need to also be filled with the Spirit continually. Yeah. And I believe that one practical way we can be filled with the Spirit continually is by praying in the Spirit regularly. In Ephesians 6, 18, Apostle Paul encouraged believers to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Yeah, yeah. so I believe that um, this is uh, uh, important. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, in fact, uh, you need to have this on that one, Michael. Uh, and it goes like this. He says, the person who, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the first couple of verses. He says, the person that, the person that speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. Now stop and think about your assignment here. Your assignment is, how do you keep your reservoir full? The person who prays in the spirit edifies himself. The word edify there means to build up. Okay? Now, sometimes we get the idea, sometimes we get the idea that that, that always means speaking in tongues. It doesn't always mean speaking in tongues. In fact, in fact, Romans 8 indicates that when we don't know how to pray as we ought, the Spirit makes intercession through us with groanings. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's, not, a, it's not a tongue. Sometimes it's just this. When you don't know this. When you don't know what to say, the Spirit of God takes over. Now, Joel will remember this. I, I spoke in chapel, okay? Told the story about my son. 
who was in prison. And when I got the telephone call that he was in prison, adopted son of mine, Native American son in prison, made some bad choices, made some bad choices. I get the call, I get the call. And if you're a parent at all, you know, Ed will remember this as well, I think, this, this message. Yeah. When I got the call, I couldn't speak in tongues. All I could do was And I'm happy to tell you that God answered that prayer. My son fell to his knees, realized he'd failed God, failed his family, and experienced a powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit and is doing ministry for Jesus while he is serving time in prison. Powerful, powerful. In fact, they call him chaplain. Okay? Was the chaplain's assistant. Now, I didn't know how to pray. So it can be in tongues, but it doesn't have to be. Pray in the spirit. Did I miss anybody else here? It's got one to share. Okay, you want my list? And I'll, I'll do my list and then I'll let you go. All right? And some of you got some of the ones that uh, I have highlighted. Uh, first one, meditating on the sure promises and provisions of God's word. That reminds me of yours, Grace. Meditating on the sure promises and provision of God's word. Ready for the next one? Walking in the power, presence, and leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now you're gonna you're gonna hear a lecture by me in that list of lectures. Some of you may have already heard it, where I talk about living by the nudge. Okay? Some of you have already gotten to it, apparently. All right? So walking in the power, presence, and leadership of the Holy Spirit at three levels. Number one, what he's doing within you. Sensitive and responsive to that. Number two, when you're gathered with God's people. When you're gathered with God's people. Sensitive and responsive to what he's doing in that gathering. And then the third one related to that is out in the marketplace. And we're talking about beyond the church house, where you buy groceries, where you work, where you go to school, so on. Now, this one was also mentioned, this next one. Faith in God and his faithfulness remember what I said about faith it's confidence in God Bible talks about building yourself up in your most holy faith keep the reservoir full when you're faced with a challenge in ministry or an opportunity in ministry you need confidence in God. Okay, here's the next one. Awareness of our authority in Christ. In other words, you need to know who you are and what you have in Christ Jesus. And uh, in fact, I jotted that 
this down. Is that, sir, Price? Excuse me, sir. What was that? Is that Price? Authority and Price? What, Joe Marie? What was that yes, again? Yes, sir. Is that awareness of our authority and? Yeah, awareness of our authority in Christ. In Christ. Okay, thank you, sir. And then I said, we need to know who we are and what we have in Christ. Um, and related to that, well, let me give you a couple of references. And I think you probably know these. Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. And chapter 3, 14 to 21. And that's Paul's apostolic prayer for the believers in the area of Ephesus. And his prayer is, oh, God, help them to realize what they have in you. Help them to realize who they are in you. And then uh, Colossians 1, 9 through 13 is another apostolic prayer in that same regard from the sister epistle, Colossians 1, 9 through 13. And I'm going to give you two more references on that one. Six, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, which is, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. You need to know who you are and what you have. Put the armor on. And the other one is Colossians 2, 13 through 15. Colossians 2, 13 through 15. It tells us the battle's already been won. He disarmed and shamed the enemy. Disarmed and shamed him. Made a public spectacle of him. We need to know who we are and what we have in Christ. And then who was it that brought this one up? I'm trying to recall. Encouragement that comes from fellowship with fellow believers. Was that you, Kim, that brought that up? Oh, it was you, Diana. Okay. Encouragement that comes from fellow believers. Fellowship with fellow believers. And then several of you kind of mentioned this one, the prayer one. Maintain an ongoing conversation with God. Pray without. What's the next word? Pray without ceasing. And then I'm trying to recall who was first, but praise and worship. Was that you, Sarah Joy? That was you. Yeah, good. Now, let me give a little lesson on that one, Sarah. We're called upon in Scripture to bless the Lord. Okay? And both the Old Testament word and the New Testament word, and especially the New Testament word, has rich significance. Eulogio. Uh, to eulogize. So what we do is we say back to God who he is. We say back to God what he's like. We say back to God what he's done. Oh, Lord, you are. Oh, Lord, you are. Oh, Lord, you are. You are rich in mercy. You, you manifest self, uh, uh, you manifest uh, covenant love. You're kind, you're gracious, you're faithful. You are, you are, you are, you are. Boy, it fills, that, it, it just fills up your reservoir. Yeah, bless the Lord. Okay. Um, obedience. That one, I don't think we had anyone mention that one particularly, but 
Obedience builds our confidence in God. In fact, put down these references. 1 John chapter 3, 19 through 21. 1 John 3, 19 through 21. And... 1 John 5, 14 and 15 say that we have confidence in our prayer when our heart does not condemn us. That's good. Um, let's imagine you facing a a uh, individual who is exhibiting demonic activity and you have harbored sin. You don't have confidence. Your heart condemns you. Okay. And then someone mentioned humility. We talked about that one. Who mentioned the humility one? Okay, Kim, you did. Yeah, it's good. He resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Oh, and I like this one. Walk in expectancy. Walk in expectancy. if I have any others here. All right. Do you think you have enough to uh, answer one and two? This help tonight? Good. We learn from one another. Amen. Lord, I come to you tonight right now and uh, oh lord help each one of these d-men students to keep their reservoir full uh, help them to listen to the apostle paul when he said be being filled with the spirit which is the tense and the mood of the Greek. Imperative, active. Be, being filled with the Spirit. Hmm. They're demon students and they're preparing for a very important milestone in their educational journey but I know them well enough to know that at APTS, each one of them sees their service for you as incredibly more important than a plaque that they place on a wall. Full of the Spirit, led by the Spirit, motivated by love. Humble servants of the Lord, but ones that know who they are and what they have in Christ Jesus. Oh God, make them mighty for you. Use them by your spirit. And as they continue this journey and this course, this semester, may it be a rich, 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 life-changing experience for them, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, this is the last time I meet you. The next time I uh, encounter you, I'll probably be reading the script you wrote. So, uh, uh, 
May you have a, I'll, I'll be praying for you regularly. I've got, what's interesting is I've got all of you taking the course this trimester. And in a few days, I'll have about an equal number of students at Harrison Graduate School of, of at uh, SAGU uh, taking the same course. So I'm going to be doing a lot of reading. So you all pray for me. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And pray this. Pray that when I grade what you have written, mercy will just <laughs> sweep over me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, sir. Amen. Well, I love you all. I'll be praying for you regularly. Any any questions before I let you go? I yes. see technical questions regarding sure. the footnote thing. Because uh, currently we are watching the video, I mean, from the YouTube. Um, do we consider that as a lecturing or we consider that as a YouTube resources? Yes, what you'll need to, no, what you will need to do is treat it as a lecture, okay. not simply as a YouTube uh, presentation. Okay. Because I, I would be doing, I would be doing them as live lectures, but I we could not arrange to do that with uh, 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 Zoom uh, adequately, and the other works very, very well. So just treat them as lectures and the name of the lecture <coughs> and so on. Yes. Good. Thank you, Kim. Anybody else before I let you go? Sir, one more question, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Can we can we have some of uh, the list that you have presented to us uh, incorporated in our uh, work also, or we cannot take from any of those? Yes, you can take you can take anything from tonight, yeah. uh, and and since it's uh, Joe Marie, since it's a a collaborative session, this is a collaborative session. What I would say on this is unless it's something that I said that you directly wanted to quote. Yeah, okay. Okay. Treat it as just a reservoir out of which you're drawing mm. your seven items. Thank you, sir. That help you? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, Anybody else? Sir. It's rich blessing upon you all. Sir, sir. Yes, I see one hand. Yes, two yeah, I, uh, Can I have uh, some time with you before we, after class? Because I sent you an email earlier this morning. Oh. Because uh, I, uh, I have some uh, concern that I need to discuss with you. Okay. okay. Sure. That sounds good. All right. So you want to talk to me now? Or you want me to make contact with you by the email you sent? If, if, if you have time, we can uh, yeah, discuss after, after our session. Okay, so I'll have everybody else sign off and I'll just visit with you. Okay, all okay. right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Blessings all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Batel. Yes, yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Good thank to see you, thank everyone. You. God bless. God bless, thank you so much. Oh, it's my privilege. Thank you, Joel. Okay, it's just us, Tupu. Yes. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, send my apology for uh, joining in late uh, today. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you for, for making time to, because uh, I have some few concern about the this mucho, especially this course, uh, uh, because of my uh, situation at the moment, and uh, because uh, this mucho is my my final mucho for Demi, and uh, 
I I don't wanna I I don't wanna miss this uh, this course because uh, it's it's a it's a very practical uh, course yes, uh, in terms of ministry uh, and it's something that I really want to learn more. Uh, yeah, uh, not only from you, from from the course itself. Right. But uh, at this point, uh, my situation it's very critical because uh, of some uh, uh, family circumstances, and uh, and uh, so I just wanna now ask uh, uh, if you can, uh, if it's okay, uh, if you can uh, allow me sometimes to work on my. Uh, my course requirements and everything. We just, uh, my wife just had a baby two weeks now. And um, we just had our, our Bible school graduation last night, which I much involved in uh, in the thing. And we have uh, uh, some, uh, some family thing uh, going on at the moment. But uh, I spoke with Barbara and I did mention, but uh, the hardest thing for me now, if I miss this mojo, that means I have to wait for one whole year to, to right. retake I'm the ashamed. whole thing. And it's something that I can't afford to, that I can't afford to do it. I, I'm, that's why I, 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 I want to discuss with you and see what your, uh, your advice from your side and, uh, but like I said, I I don't want to miss the course. To be honest, sure. I really want to you know that. But it's just the you know, the timing that I need to uh, to sort out the, uh, my. Well, yeah, let, let 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 me let me talk to you a little bit about that, uh, Supu. So, if you've talked with Barb. Um, the, the date that the assignment is due is September 11. Okay. So between now and September 11, uh, you pay yourself um, the lectures that are uh, on YouTube. Yes. Okay and the assigned reading for the course yeah. you will you will pace yourself on on those items yeah. you have you have the questions that you need to work on for the final project yeah the, the thing that that's another thing that i need to uh wh where do i need to get the the questions because at, at the i sent them I sent them as an email. Did you did you get that email? No, I messaged uh, some of our uh, I messaged uh, some of the classmates uh, in terms of the the the, the 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 questions I received. I've already started the, with the the lectures and my reading, but it's just the the question I haven't received. I haven't received. I messaged the. Do you have the syllabus? Do you have the syllabus? Yes, I did have the syllabus. Okay. Uh, and you said you sent me an email? No, this morning I sent you an email uh, asking okay, for, a, for, for a time to, to discuss. Okay. Yeah. So, so what I will do is I will send you a copy of this document. Okay. Which has the questions on it and the instructions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will send that to you. Okay. Okay. To make sure you have it. If you yeah. don't have it within a day or so, remind me. Yes, I will. Okay. Remind me. Apart from that, I'm assuming that uh, that APTS has a policy regarding. Yeah. Uh, giving incompletes. Yeah. Okay. If if uh, 
Barb, if, it, if, if you are approaching the end of the trimester and you yeah. need additional time, yeah. and Barb agrees, yeah. I will extend that to you. Okay. Thank you. So you're covered that way. Yeah. But this is really self-paced for the rest of the semester. Yes. Yeah. So if you have a, a time you, that you can't work, yeah. uh, of situations I understand that yeah. but there will be other times you can yes. so do the best you can and then yes. just learn how you're progressing and let yeah. me know I, I will you know uh, the truth is I I almost I was it was a, a really hard decision for me to make because this is my this is my final mucho and the last two weeks I have to bury my uh, my brother. My older brother died uh, last uh, last two weeks. I really, I, that was really affected my preparation sure. for the smoke. Sure. And uh, I I did mention to our classmate if to remember me and our family in in prayer for that. And and, and it was a very challenging for me. It was because it was my final. I was looking forward to my final mucho and to my last final courses and and all these things happen at the same time mm. so i i you know like i said i i will do my best i will try my best to to do what i can and because i i don't want to miss this this course and i don't want to wait for another another year to to complete my uh my final my final courses for the for because this is my last mojo. But thank you so much for understanding. Well, Tupu, my... listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Philippians is for you. Philippians 4. Paul said, I know how to be abased. He said, I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, poverty or plenty, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. That strengthens me. And he's going to help you. Thank and you. I'm going to pray Thank for you. you. Amen. Father, I pay for, pray for my friend right now. Amen. He wants to finish well. And he needs your strength. He needs your comfort. Yes, sir. He needs your help. And you have promised to give it. And I, as his professor, yes, sir. Am, am praying today that you will be everything he needs yes, as he moves forward. May this be more than a class that he Jesus. takes. Yes, sir. May yes, sir. this be a spiritual victory. Yes, sir. We pray that Thank in you, Jesus' Father. name. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. He's enough for you, my friend. Thank you. I'll help you. I'll help you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank Anything you, sir. Yep. Yeah, yeah. God bless. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks.